ENT as a field, uh, the few areas that I will cover, okay, so ear, nose, throat. So I'm going to talk about first, how is ENT as a, a carrier, okay, what all can you do? Then I'm going to talk about ENT from your exam perspective, what comes, what doesn't come and how this particular module is going to help you. And finally, I am going to come to the money. How much money, paisa kitna hai ENT mein? How much can you earn? I think sometimes you need to know that if we don't talk about it, people will just think those one or two fields make most amount of money. And aapko aisa lag raha because they tell that ENTs are generally very busy in their own work. They don't talk about how much money they earn. But I thought somewhere we have to start this so that because that's an important aspect should not be the only reason why you pick a field. But hey, Zaruri, you should know, uh, you know, that there is sustainability in ENT. Okay. So now let me talk about from the carrier standpoint. Okay. Some new, uh, you know, uh, rules and updates have come from the National Medical Council saying that if you do ear, nose, throat, uh, masters in ear, nose, throat surgery, you have a very good chance of doing... MCH in certain fields, which I will tell you uh, in just a bit. But as a carrier, I think, see, every field has its own pros and cons. ENT also does have. I'm not saying it's good, it's good. But ENT gives some additional benefits, I would say, in terms of flexibility of field and raise of options, like range of options are there. So sometimes what happens is, you know, see, I've also been through this. Uh, you are thinking about it from many perspectives, you know, but somewhere in your mind, you're like, see, these are all skill related ENT or any other field or as a doctor, there is skills, either communication skills or thinking skills or hands-on surgical skills. We're skill heavy field. What if you don't like the field after you take it? What if you're not good at those skills? What if other people go do better and now you've taken a field and your skills are not there and now you are stuck? You won't, you won't grow in that field. ENT gives you a little additional benefit over here that the field itself has four subjects. It has ear, it has nose, it has throat, and it has head and neck. Okay, it has four Four subjects in one, four fields in one. So each comes with its own skill sets and a career opportunity. So if you don't get into one or you don't like one, you have three other things to fall back to. Like ear gives you a lot of microscopic skills. Microscopic skills are required in, in ear surgeries. You have to put a microscope, pass in small, small instruments into the ear canal, do drilling in the mastoid. All of that kind of thing is what ear surgeries require. A skill is microscopic skill. Nose requires endoscopic skills. You need to pass in a long tube, a camera that goes inside the nose, see all the sinuses, sometimes even go up to the skull base, into the brain. Advanced nasal, uh, you know, skull base endoscopic surgeries. Endoscopy skills are very much like gaming. You know, pass a camera, see a screen, and you know, you have to navigate. Skills are very different. Throat, you have both uh, micro laryngeal surgeries as well as endoscopic surgeries also very recently endoscopic ear surgeries have also come so within each field also you're getting multiple types of surgeries but let us say you will ask me uh, dr jagdish what if i do i'm not good at microscopy what if i'm not good at endoscopy don't worry there is open surgeries open standard open neck Head and neck surgery, thyroid surgeries, laryngectomies, cyst removals, you know, a lot of these surgeries that can be done are open neck surgeries. I don't know if there's any other field that gives you so many options in surgeries itself to do microscopy, endoscopy, open neck surgery. And then you say, but what if I don't like surgery? I don't like it. What if I, I think I like it, but afterwards I'm not going to do good in surgery. Even fine. ENT is a very good physician opportunity as well. You can become, uh, you know, let's say allergy specialist. You can become a voice specialist. All right. Uh, you can also become a vertigo specialist. You can just practice ENT as an OPD, as a physician field. A um, uh, lot of pediatric ENT comes. Okay. So pediatric ENT is another very good, uh, you know, opportunity that is uh, growing. So 
just as a physician also you want to just opd practice then you can do this teaching there are a lot of opportunities as well because of many medical colleges and platforms like these so i think enta gives you a lot of diverse fallbacks very hard to be bad in everything if you're not if you're itne sab mein bhi agar aap kuch nahi kar rahe then of course you can try some stand up comedy but anyway <laughs> jokes apart uh, this gives you a lot now suppose you want to study further people think ent is an end field like you take general surgery and medicine thinking that you can do super specialization now that has changed after ent you can do mch in these areas you can pick neurosurgery yes if you have done your masters in ent you qualify to do mch in neurosurgery makes lot of sense and gives you double benefit see i have worked with neurosurgeons who call me because they don't know how to do the endoscopic approach for skull based surgery but if you have done ent and do mch neurosurgery you have the endoscopic skills also as well as the other neurosurgical skills that you will develop you can go into surgical oncology and uh, head and neck onco surgery so surgical onco and most importantly you can also go into plastic surgery maxillofacial surgery all of these mchs you can do after ent so guys please correct anybody who keeps saying that uh, it's an end branch uh, you know there is uh, not oh mani ka man kat gaya because of my shirt all right let me write that again yaar mani ke sath humko aisa nahi khelna chahiye mane all right yeah so uh, don't uh, when anybody says that you know ent is a dead branch it is an end branch you have no future you cannot do, have any other options just take a picture of this slide and show it to them okay so there is a lot and lot of uh, future opportunities uh, in ent that you are not aware of now from an exam standpoint okay you must be thinking yeah okay 5 to 15 questions are typically uh, you know asked in uh, in in ent um, generally uh, the last few years exams have not been very very difficult we have covered everything we were, uh, almost 100% hit rate even in 1.0 uh, but in 2.0 we are going to try to make it a little more clinical specific there are a lot of images that are being asked radiological and scenarios so from the exam point 5 to 15 questions images radiological scenarios a lot of these are going to come and uh, a lot of uh, you know indirect questions asked from other fields which will have an ent thing you know mucomycosis can be both microbiological pathological as well as ent similarly like that radiological findings can also get mixed with ent so if you look at the overlaps you can expect 20 to 25 uh, rough, roughly the questions and when next comes 60 questions are going to be there uh from ent so from your exam standpoint also it is very important as a doctor whether or not you pick ent you will have these very nice relatives and friends who are going to call you for their common colds ear blocks allergies and sore throats and that my friends is also ent so you better have some good knowledge about ent even otherwise if you don't pick ent as a field all right money 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 now first let me address why is it that some people or you know, i don't know how you students get to listen to them probably because you know they are either some junior faculty in the colleges or some of your seniors who have heard my friend my uncle like that say that you know ent is saturated and there is no money in ent guys look this a uh, response typically comes from people who are in the job profile now first i want to clarify doctors don't have to be employees if you are thinking your only way in future is to work as an employee in a hospital then that is a very very small part of the entire healthcare fraternity majority of doctors work in their own establishments being a doctor does not require uh, you know uh, you to be uh, you know um, employed in a particular hospital 15 20 years ago it was not easy for a doctor to get all the equipment and the infrastructure and that's why that was the only way that people would do is get a job in a hospital or a medical college and then grow their careers now it is very different technology i keep endoscopes in my pocket i can operate anywhere outside even if a patient is sitting on the sofa right you have access to labs and path labs and uh, images uh, you know radiological imaging at your you know anywhere you want you you have that uh, those facilities and you can plug in into hospitals just to do your surgeries i operate in six cities in our country so 
you don't really require to be that job oriented employee see when you're trying to look for jobs every field is saturated why are you targeting only one field any field you one it is less saturated one is more saturated but jobs are only going to be limited to the number of institutions 50,000 probably max 60,000 70,000 establishments are there in our country right there are about 700 800 medical colleges rest are all private hospitals now that's all is your job pool you may go abroad or you may go to us or uk and then they're also going to come back because everything is becoming saturated and economically uh unsurvivable uh many places abroad uh, but you can set up something on your own and if you set up something on your own trust me guys uh, there is a huge earning potential as well as an impact potential that you can create now let me stop you right there one guy is saying Mere dost ne khola uska kharab gaya. wait wait guys wait you require a lot of common sense. You require a lot of uh, intelligence uh, to be able to start something. Now, if you are going to open something right next to a big doctor's uh, facility, you may not get patients. If you are not good at seeing your patients, you are rude to them. Say, I have a topper. I came from this college. I write that. I'm not explaining to you. You are not going to get patients. It's a human skill. If you are good and your patients are getting good results, you have good word of mouth. Trust me, any doctor in any field will survive anywhere and grow in their own space, right? If you're not good and you have found a location that is strategically not right, one to two kilometer radius, mein, you should not have another bigger facility or an option for a patient. So that then, because nowadays people choose convenience. If you're going to say for 1.4 billion people and the entire country, there is an ENT doctor in every lane, then you are absolutely wrong. There are only 18,000 of us. <laughs> 18,000. Maximum by the time you clear, there will be, uh, you know, 19,000, 20,000 in the next four or five years. That's all. We grow at a very slow rate because seats are so less. So, 20,000 people at the max. Actually, we are only 16,000, 18,000. But 20,000 at the max for 1.4 billion people and an ENT is there in every lane. So, yeah, no, absolutely not. Maybe they're concentrated in cities, but why do you want to? You can find places in cities where you have this kind of a scenario. Two kilometer radius, no big facility, and there's high density of people. You know, you can do some good, you know, establishment over there. Clinics are not very expensive to set up also. iPhones are real. You know, how much you spend on an iPhone, you can easily set up your clinic right so you sometimes nowadays you get small shops for rent 5000 to 15000 25000 maximum 30 to 40000 per month and if you see about a good 100 150 patients a month which will not come in the first month but four five months six months later you will easily be able to cover a lot of the cost from that and the surgeries that come out from it so don't don't uh, you know think about i need to spend a lot to set it up can be as low as 5,000 in some places. I've set up clinics and that amount of money and can be as high as 40 to 50,000 if you're going to a large city as well. Equipment wise, you don't need very much expensive equipment. Maybe another 25, 30,000 spent for equipment and you will be ready to set up and start a full-fledged ENT practice. Attach yourself to hospital. No hospital will say as a visiting doctor, you cannot come. If you're bringing a patient into their operation theater, anybody nearby will, will accept you. Okay, so you can just say, I'm going to come and operate in your hospital. If there's insurance coverage, I will do that in your hospital. I myself am a visiting consultant in so many hospitals, but I run my own clinics as well. So that kind of a model works very well and you can earn a lot of money there. And also, I'm not saying just do this for the money. You create a lot of difference in people's lives. You treat them. You create an impact. And that is the main reason why we got to be a doctor. Money is just your sustainability part. And also, of course, a quality of life. Jo aap chate hai. So now, let me take this money into two routes. One is if you were in private practice. One is if you go into the medical college or the employee job route. If you go into colleges, once you finish your ENT, you will join as a senior resident. Senior residents can typically earn anywhere between 80,000 per month to 1.5 lakh. I'm giving you this range because unfortunately in our country, we don't have a very standard division. Some states pay better than the others. But 80,000 to 1.5 lakh is where a senior resident would get now in 2023. And then um, the senior resident will then progress to an assistant professor, which would be 1 to 2 lakh, and then that becomes associate professor, which could be 1.5 to 2.5 lakh. Sometimes associate professors can also make 3 lakhs depending upon, uh, you know, the medical college. And then if you are a prof and above, it can be anywhere between 
two to five lakhs depending upon the college or the corporate or you know or the hospital that you're working in as an employee many of them will there also allow you evening practice uh, or they don't give a non-practicing allowance then your your practice also adds up uh, to this so this is kind of uh, the range uh, that i could say from an academic standpoint but if you go into private practice in your first let's say five years uh, you have a potential to earn anywhere between 1 to 3 lakhs, okay, because this whole journey can take 10 years. But uh, after that, when you grow, the po overall potential I've seen, see, I'm telling based on, uh, you know, some personal experiences and also some doctors that I know who do very, very well, um, you can earn as high as 12 to 15 lakhs and sometimes up to 20 lakhs a month uh, and otherwise a good average. Uh, you know, for a, for an ENT surgeon who's uh, good in their skills, well established, and seeing a lot of patients, uh, earning between uh, five to seven lakhs is not really a very difficult thing. I mean, I'm talking about these are monthly uh, earnings. Okay, I know you can do cochlear implantations. I forgot to mention there's also implantations that you can do. Uh, you know, implants are now big even in ear, nose and throat. So you have nose implants, ear implants, throat implants, a lot of these implantation uh, surgeries are also, uh, you know, there. prosthetic surgeries are also there in head and neck. So there is a, just a lot of scope and there is a fair and decent amount of uh, money as well. Uh, the reason probably some people say there is because either they are not, you know, probably up to the mark with their skills or, you know, they've taken a job in a place where there's not much volume load and they feel just, we're just doing wax removals and very simple, simple things and they feel there is not much growth there they are frustrated they are not having the passion for the field and maybe they are saying these things uh, and uh, you are taking that in a very generalized uh, manner and saying that yeah ENT is saturated ENT has no future think about this and you will probably have a little bit of a scientific answer to this think about how many doctors uh, who were in uh, jobs and uh, hospitals and colleges have moved to private practice and how many people from private practice have ever come back into colleges and aapka answer aapke samne hai so you can think about that before you try to uh, run down a field uh, when it is not true all right now uh, Finally, we have a lot of Im images. We have a plethora of images. These are endoscopy images. So we have access to images um, that we create, uh, we, we produce uh, while we see patients actively in our clinical practice. So we have ear, nose, throat, larynx images. Uh, and uh, many of these images that we have are submitted to a library that was also used in many exams like PLABS, USMLEs, all the Indian exams and many foreign universities as well because there is a shortage of images, copyright issues and and uh, with Physicswala, we are giving them, you know, uh, you guys uh, actual images of patients that we have, uh, you, know, um, you know, done endoscopies and gathered them. Uh, and we are also going to share this on social media platforms with you so that you start getting used to seeing what an eardrum looks like, what a nasal ca cavity looks like, what a throat looks like, so that it is easy for you to answer a lot of these image based questions all right guys so guys it's going to be exciting we're going to be doing this um, you know uh, 2.0 uh, with a lot more concepts a lot more clinical uh, you know relevance so that you are uh, not only good for your exam but also just as a doctor you have the right perspective for a field like ENT and uh, you excel in it all right so I wish you all the best for the rest of the sessions and I hope you're going to be with me don't skip the videos and just read the notes and then you know take a conclusion that the notes are very very short or brief um, we're also going to teach you the concepts which complement the notes notes not just alone all right uh, so be with me trust me all right uh, we are here uh, only to help you we are not over uh, here to you know get something out of you which uh, is bad for you right so we're here to help you and hope you trust me in that all right take care see you all the best